Warren Buffett has said that one of the best lessons he ever learned from his mentor, Ben Graham, is that the market is there to serve you and never to inform you. What does that mean? It means that a lot of people look at the markets and they look at where things stand and they take their information from that. So they say, well, the market's high, it must be overvalued, or the market fell today, it must be, there must be a problem. And he says, that's not how you do it. What you do is you do your own due diligence, you do your own research, and based on the fundamentals, you make your own determination on what something is worth or what it should be selling for, and then you use that to your advantage. And so if you believe believe that a certain stock should be worth $20 a share based on your understanding of the fundamentals and you show up at the market and they're selling it for 10 then you should buy as much as you could possibly get your hands on and on the flip side of that if the market's willing to buy it from you for 30 then you should sell as much as you possibly can so the price of the market has no bearing on the true value the true value should be your own determination now many times those two numbers align. You know, people talk about how markets are efficient, meaning that there's very rarely these opportunities to buy or sell uh, at, at prices that are far beyond what the true value is. And I believe that's true for the most part, especially now with the information that's available and the size of the market. I believe that most of the time the market is very efficient, but there are windows of opportunity that open up from time to time where you can really uh, maximize value as an investor uh, because of emotions, right? Because emotions get heavy and people either get really fearful or really greedy. And when those things happen, when emotions take over, uh, irrationality kind of enters in. And this whole efficient market, rational market hypothesis kind of starts to go out the window. Again, it might just be limited pockets of time when that happens, but it certainly does happen. So the way that you can best understand this is to, to take this same analogy and take it to something that's easier for us to all understand. So I'll give you an example. Uh, I buy business suits. I don't like to wear suits a lot, but every now and then I'll wear one. And uh, there's a certain type, a certain brand that I like. I like the quality of it. I like the way it fits, the way it feels. And the retail price for that suit is $1,200. And I think that is fundamentally a great price for that suit uh, because of how it's built and how it fits. However, I can tell you right now, I have never paid $1,200 for one of those suits. I wait for them to go on sale. When they drop down to $600, kind of maybe a seasonal sale, like a spring sale, I'll go in and buy a couple. If they drop down to $300, I'll go in and buy every single color that they have, every single print. Like I'll buy them all at 300 because I know they're worth 12 and all I'm doing is sitting back and letting that sales market serve me, right? So I don't, you know, wake up and walk in and see that they're on sale for 300 and say, oh, these suits must have really lost their value and they're not that great anymore and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll start wearing a different suit. No, I know they're still worth 1200 but I'm willing to buy them when they're on sale. And on the uh, on the converse, if I went in and, and, and bought one of those suits and I went home and a friend of mine said, man, I love your suit, I'll give you 3000 I'd sell it to them all day long for 3000 right? So it's knowing what something's worth and then letting the market serve you. It's exactly the same in the stock market. You need to understand what something's worth and then let the market serve you. Don't get emotional when you see the market skyrocket or when you see it crash. That should have no bearing on how you operate as an investor. Now, final point, if you can't understand that yourself, if you don't know how to do the research, the due diligence to understand where value should be and really stay on top of that, that's where you need to work with an advisor. So if you can do that on your own, great. If you feel like you're not really um, skilled in that area, you don't know how to do that, and that's where you need to work with an advisor who can do that research on your behalf and help you take advantage of those things. So that's how you need to look at things. Don't look at things and take instruction. Look at the market as being your servant.